we have Disney news this week. Trick-or-treat locations have been released. There's another Florida resident ticket available and more changes come to MDE. Plus, DVC news and a couple quick Disney Spring reviews on episode 153 of the Mickey File podcast. Welcome back to another episode of the Mickey File podcast. I am Scott, and with me, as always, is my lovely wife, Karen. Hello, everybody. So it's, uh, what would this be, the second week of August, I guess? Yes, yes. Kind of. No, I had to stop and think there, because the first was last Tuesday, so yeah. Yeah. We're in the second week of August. There you go. And, uh... Yeah. People are going back to school already. Yikes. Yeah, I know. Speaking okay. of, that's why we uh that's why we went back to Disney yes. last week. And just quick trip. Friday night came home Saturday pretty early. We did. But yeah, our friend Jen stayed over, so we had to go back. And she didn't and tell she didn't tell us goodbye. during the week. It's just surprise. <laughs> Yeah, well, we weren't going to make it during the week anyway, so. I know. We had a good time. Just did mm-hmm. just did Disney Springs. Didn't even go to a park. You are correct. A uh, couple, uh, mm-hmm. couple of new-ish places, so that was cool. Yes. We'll talk a little bit about that, but mostly news, because we didn't really do a lot. We went just a couple of places in Disney Springs, and. I know. Is it? Pretty much, yeah. We were fun. low key. It was kind of low key. We were, and it was a group of us, or what, five of us? Yeah, yeah. So, Didn't know it was going to be five cool. of us. No, it just <laughs> kept happening. Like the whole Burned going over it. there was a surprise, and then I'm I'm walking back to to get to Paddlefish, and there's John Self walking down the other the other way on the bridge. So he joined the party, and Jason <laughs> came over. Yeah. Yeah, who knew? Because he was he was tired of waiting for furniture, so he came over. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so these very things cool. happen. Yeah. yeah, very fun night. Yeah, um, it was about all I have. I know kind that was just up. the high level. It was kind of the warm up. Yeah, yeah. So let's go ahead and kick off the news. Okay, let me make this big screen so I can read it. Trick-or-treat locations for Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party have been released with some minor changes. Actually, I was kind of surprised on this. I mean, I was surprised, but not really surprised. Um, So Gaston's Tavern and near the entrance of Tron have been added to the trick-or-treat locations. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. And then I'll... Okay. And... Jungle Cruise and Splash Mountain have been removed as trick-or-treat locations. Okay, so am I wrong or is Jungle Cruise going to be open? Don't know. Thought I heard that, but I may be dreaming. I have not yet found, I mean, it opens on, it's on Fridays the first night. So I'm sure that the thing's going to be released. So maybe it's not. I don't know. but with no Splash Mountain, maybe it is. You know what I mean? Maybe. Right. Splash Mountain, there's no I mean, way that you could sense. do trick-or-treating there. It's a right. jungle of scaffolding. Right. I mean, that right would now. make complete sense. But the Jungle yeah. Cruise one is the one that surprised me. But then when I thought about it, I'm like, oh, well, then they need to open up another ride. The entrance of Tron bothers me. Well, like, I think it's just the front entrance. Like they're probably going to send people. So, like I'm all guessing. the way back down by Splash by Space Mountain, maybe. Probably, yeah. I'm thinking that, or they're sending it the trick or treat things. How it sends it into uh, where the big circus area is, so it sends it back there to um, behind Barnstorm. Yeah, but that's already at the train station. Yeah. This says the entrance of Tron. Tron better uh, be open during this party, is what I'm getting at. No, it is. It's there on. It's virtual okay. queue. During the party. Yeah. 
God. That's how they're doing it for the parties is virtual. Cube. I guess I this knew that, but oh God. Yeah. Okay. Well. But they've not given any information as far as when you can do it. So I'm wondering if it's like the 6 p.m. thing like they do for the extended hours at Guardians. And the first parties in three days. Yeah. And nothing's been announced about it. I mean, other than the fact that it's virtual queue. That's yeah. the only thing they've announced for the Halloween parties and the Christmas parties, both. So, what are they going to do if they have a problem with that ride? No idea. And they can't get all the virtual queues for the day done by six o'clock. I don't know. Seems like a train wreck. Anyway. Yeah. And if they get in line, let's say that they have a late virtual queue, they're not going to kick people out, right? If they're in line. Not if they're in line. Right. But it'll be the last thing they do. Right. You know. Right. Anyway, so it's going to be interesting to see how this all works out. Yes, I'm glad I'm not going to the first party. Me too. So maybe by the time we go at the end of September, they'll have all of the kinks done. Yeah, I'm sure they will. Uh, yeah. At least they better have them all done. Yeah, I think they will. Okay. There is a new Florida resident two-day park ticket available. It started August 1st, and it's good through September 29th. It's $159, and it's only for Epcot Animal Kingdom. So you get, you know, one day at Epcot and one day at Animal one day at Animal Kingdom. So you just have a note here. Wherever you saw that, is there anything about it not being available any certain days? Mm, no. I ask because Labor Day weekend is in the middle of that, and it's going to make Epcot a I, disaster. I can look to confirm. It's okay. We'll put it on the web, on the Facebook page if it is. Okay. I didn't see anything. So. Yeah. It, you can add on water sports and sports thing so you could do a water park one day and then like putt putt the other day for $35 it lets you add on that too which I thought was kind of neat yeah pretty good deal for which one's open Typhoon Lagoon yeah for 35 bucks I think yeah Yeah. all right and then Walt Disney World and Disneyland are going to be launching an updated system to find and reserve dining reservations. It's going to be available on both the website and my Disney experience. Anyone who has ever tried to make a reservation is going to be so happy about this. I know. So with the update, guests are going to be able to see all available time slots for the restaurant that they're wishing to make reservations for. Previously, when you picked it, it was like a time block. So if you did lunch, you would only find the lunch ones. If you did dinner, it would only do that. Now it shows you the entire day and it lists them all out. Yeah, that's awesome. And then you just click the one you want. So. Because usually it's not so much, I want to have lunch at Beer Garden. It's, I want to eat at Beer Garden. Right. So... This is cool. This is going to cut down a lot of time in trying to make your ADRs. Exactly. Because then you go out and back in and out and back in because then you have to refresh it and it's a pain. Yeah. (laughs) I'm very excited about this one. I know. I'm really excited about it. Because there's times I'm like, okay, I want to go, but I really don't care what time. I just want to see what they got. Well, and there's times that you want to do, it's six o'clock and you want to go to wherever, Mm -hmm. Turf Club. Right. If you pick dinner, it may give you nine fifty. Right. If you pick six o'clock, it'll give you anything from whatever five to seven or four thirty to seven or whatever it is. Right. And I may want eight o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So oh. it's cool. I know. I'm. Uh, it doesn't give a date. It just says coming soon. Yeah. So it'll be I'm right hoping- after Figment and the. 
at Bugs Ghost and the trams at Epcot. I think the hat box ghost is going to be before anything. <laughs> Everything will be reopened for the 50th anniversary. Remember that? I know. I know. I know I'm that doesn't have anything to do with Figment or the hat box ghost, but it does have still to do waiting. with trams. They made a lot of promises the last couple of years for Disney World that yeah seem to be a little been, empty yeah we kind of been swept under the rug a little bit on a few of those things and it has nothing to do with Iger taking over no you it's know. just they make they make empty promises promises they, they have, know they can't keep but, well I don't know if they knew they couldn't keep it maybe they just didn't have any intention of keeping it okay that's probably you know. a better way of saying it but they figure if they say it to us, then we kind of go, oh, great, yay. Can't wait for yeah, that. I mean, it just, you know, the figment thing is starting to get on my nerves. Well, I suppose at least... The hat box ghost, they... I understand. They're they're now clearly trying to set that up with the movie. Yeah. And, you know... Right. Whatever, that's fine. Right. right. I did see that they supposedly they filed a permit to yeah for a meet and meet and greet. Yes, I now did I said see supposedly. That. I don't know. No, if I saw it's, that. Yeah, I don't know if it's valid. Yeah, but yeah, you know. and I can't remember where I saw it, but it. Yeah, I can't either. But I saw. I'm like, well, we'll see. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. So, but this thing. The upgraded for the reservations. I'm very excited about. I like to see how it works too. Yeah, so. me too. Mm -hmm. So Disney Springs has stopped offering valet services. Um it it was available down at Cirque du Soleil. Yeah, and I know and you took advantage not, of it one time, and now it's done. I did once. Yeah, right. It was certainly not as convenient as other places, right? You know, because right. it was yeah. all the way at one end. But it was really set up mainly for Cirque du Soleil, anyways. Yeah, I'm sure that's true. Right. Listen, I, unless you are either coming from Key West. Saratoga or Port Orleans, or you have your own car. Mm -hmm. The whole transportation thing at Disney Springs is not I great, <laughs> less than optimal. Right. But it is yeah. interesting that a place like that wouldn't have valet. Yes. I agree. So, unless it just wasn't. Getting enough business? I, I don't know. Well, it wasn't run by Disney, and I don't know if the rest of them are or not. Mm, good question. I don't know. Although I do know that, like, the ones at the resorts have on Disney name badges. Yes, they do. Although but they're not always magical either. No, they are contract. They, they are <laughs> third-party contracted. All of them? Well, I spoke with one yesterday. And she said she was a contractor. Okay. Yeah. We went to Wilderness Lodge Saturday. <laughs> God, I forgot about that. The guy at the valet counter was legitimately sleeping, sitting there. Like, I talked to him. He never blinked. I tapped the desk a few times. He never blinked. He was legit asleep sitting at the valet stand. Yep. And we were talking, we're like, can you believe this? I mean, we weren't quiet about it either. No. <laughs> no, like I told the dude in the wilderness explorer or park ranger uniform, whatever he was wearing, like, yeah. hey, you may want to wake your valet dude up, you know. <laughs> and it's not like it was like one in the morning or something, you mm. know. It was like what? It was 
11 o'clock, 1130 in the morning. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Because he had a good Friday night. Apparently. (laughs) Yeah, it was kind of weird, kind of ridiculous. Yeah. No, it was totally ridiculous. It was totally ridiculous. It so was I actually... will assume that they are probably third party because of that. Because yeah, I'd like to think that Disney's not allowing that. I would like to think that as well. Yes. Disney Cruise Line is raising prices of the day-based internet packages across the fleet of ships. Yeah, I know, and it's it actually. Sucks. Yeah, and it's. Act, it wasn't just a little price raise. It's well, it's. I mean, all right. So the Stay Connected, which is the lowest package, mm-hmm. um, was twelve dollars daily or ten dollars per day for the length of the cruise. Right. It is now going to be eighteen or sixteen. So you know, it's six bucks. But it's but six like bucks 50, 60%. Day. Yeah. Right. Um, the premium, which is what we got last year. This um, year. This year. Yeah. March. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It was $20 a day for the crew, for the length of the cruise. It is now going to be $34 per day for the length of the cruise. So, wow. It has been rolled out on, at this point, the Magic Wish Dream and Fantasy. Not yet the Wonder, but they think that's going to happen during its upcoming dry dock. You can add it at any time during the voyage. Yes. You so you don't do have it. to have it for the whole trip. Right. But we've end we've ended up having it the whole time, right? We did, yeah. Because yeah. um you know, the first day you're at sea. Right. So but that's a big jump going from twenty to thirty four a day. That's a big jump. Yeah, it is. What it means is that people were using it and buying it, so they want to see how much more they can get for it. I mean, I, I get it, but I mean, it, that's a big jump. Mm-hmm. I could see like 20 to, you know, 25 or 30, 34. Wow. Okay. Just my own. Yeah. So, but. So that is, according to this website, an increase of 13 to 16%. So. Okay. It's actually percentage wise, like the smallest increase. Right. And that's because the premium. A- that's the one that's, you know, it gives you social media, web, and email access, video streaming, music streaming. Right. And we had that one, right? We did, yeah. Because we wanted to be able to do lives and all that. Gotcha. Okay. And it worked fairly well. I mean, we did FaceTime and stuff too. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, we did do that, didn't we? Yeah, so it works fairly well. Yeah, I just have to remember when to turn my thing off because we end up having this charges for me. Right. (laughs) It's just because I was being a dummy about it. (laughs) (laughs) And Pearl Castaway Club members can arrive anytime for their sailing without selecting a boarding time. Yeah, so I put that on Facebook the other day because I don't know. I mean, we've been on one cruise. Right. Right. So I put it on Facebook the other day. Jeff Apolka, our friend who does a lot of cruises. Right. Um, let me find it real quick here. He's at like, I think between 10 and 15. I don't know. He's not Pearl yet, but he's up there. Yeah. Cause Pearl's whatever a lot. below Pearl is he had 25 yeah. cruises, I think or something now. Yeah. 25 is Pearl. Yeah, he said they're raising the bar. Pre-COVID, Platinum got first boarding group. That went away with COVID. Now they add a new higher teal and shift that per- to Pearl. Yeah. So, Platinum lost a perk and... 
right. Pearl picked, Pearl got one. Yeah. But. Interesting. I thought it was interesting. So, but now we do get, for this next one, we do get, like, what, five days earlier or something? Ten days earlier? Because we're silver, I guess it is, or whatever we are. Uh, yeah, yes, whatever it is. Yeah. I looked at yeah. it a while back, but I haven't, not enough yeah, to it. know what it actually is. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. That's all like regular news. There is some DVC news. There is some DVC news. Um, this is actually big for everything. Uh, but effective August 1st, so last week, mm-hmm. Bell Services at Disney and Disney Vacation Club Resorts will no longer handle any alcohol bev- al- alcoholic beverages included with guest grocery orders. So you will have to be there. Yes. Pick it up. I'm yes. sure that some 16 year old kid ended up getting an alcohol order, and yeah. So there we go. Right. I don't know. Not that big a deal to me, but right. I saw a couple of blogs today that are. Oh no! Really? So I don't know. Yeah, I'm, yeah but. Well, then just have an adult there. You need those clicks. Yeah. You know, Disney's new alcohol policy, not, which I understand is right, but it gets you to click like, yeah. What are they not going to overserve people anymore? You know, are they adding alcohol in Magic Kingdom? You know, what are they doing? Uh, something right. that we yeah. knew about a month ago. Right. But it's because they actually want the adults, they don't want, kids to get alcohol that's right. fine right i'm fine with it <laughs> yeah and we tried that once with that like amazon now that apparently yeah. has gone away anyway right um and then we were not there when it arrived and so they canceled the order and left yeah so it's, you know which is good i mean don't just set it by my door it won't be there right so anyway, um, so that's one. Um, Saratoga mm-hmm. Springs has joined the list of resorts with a limited time purchase incentive when buying points direct from DVC. Mm-hmm. So the incentives are going to range from $10 a point up to $34 a point for current owners. New buyers will save $16 to $32 per point depending on the size of the purchase. So... Uh, Saratoga currently is 205 a point direct. So if you were buying, let's say 200 points, Mm -hmm. you would get a $32.50 discount per point for uh, current owners and $30 per point discount for new owners, which would make it $172.50 or $175 a point. I think that's a pretty good incentive. That is higher than resale, but but you're you directing. get yeah yeah. So you get membership extras for a current member starting at a hundred points, a hundred to one hundred twenty four. You're going to get a thousand dollar discount on the total purchase. Yeah, and it goes up from there. And then new buyers to get the, from one fifty to, to get the thirty four. Dollar a point off. You have to buy a thousand points. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that happens all the time. Yes, all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. it happens some. I just saw a resale contract for. I think it was Grand Flow. Mm-hmm. Was a thousand points for one hundred ninety-seven dollars a point? I mean, that's a good price. It right? is, but it's one hundred ninety-seven thousand dollars. <laughs> oh, no problem. I'll just let me write a check for that. Yeah, resale. <laughs> thousand points for one hundred ninety-seven dollars, and you don't get Moonlight Magic. Moonlight Magic or Top of the World. Yeah, <laughs> but here in this case, 
you'd be better off buying them direct for 17250 a point. See? Oh, well, that's right. Saratoga. That's not what Grand Flow is, so never mind. Right. But it's anyway. Um, yeah. And then there's uh, some new food at Artist Palette at Saratoga. Mm-hmm. Um, just some of the things. They've added avocado toast because that's everywhere now. Um, a charcuterie plate. Turkey BLT, the beef on whack looked really good. Mm-hmm. The tuna salad sandwich, I mean, it's just tuna, but sometimes I'm craving that. But it's on a sun, toasted sunflower roll uh, bread. So I'd like to right. try that just because I don't know what sunflower bread is. Mm-hmm. The margarita pizza is not new, but they've updated it a little bit. They have, right. um, and they also have now homestyle meatloaf, sauteed garlic shrimp, herb roasted chicken. So there's some stuff and a couple of cool of, looking desserts. I know the dirt, that Derby day pie looked really cute. Yeah, it did. I'm sure we'll like be a seeing a, uh, I'm sure we'll see a uh, review of that pretty soon. Cause I know John self was there today. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the artist palette cookie looks like the cookie from the um, arts festival. Mm-hmm. It's the same cookie, but I'm sure it's probably a little better than that one. <laughs> Um, I guess. Well, that one was like, it, it was hard. You yeah. know, this one just looks a little better. So. Oh, I think tomorrow he says he's going. Oh, okay. So. Oh. But yeah, but yeah, that's I mean, it looked good. They're stepping mm-hmm. up their game a little bit at Artist Palette, which is they cool. Are. Yeah. yeah, it does. It looks just like the one they had. It looks like an artist's palette. Right. <laughs> but it's cute. It is cute. So, and it makes sense. For it's just a sugar coke, a sugar cookie with icing paint and strawberry biscuit stick paintbrush. Yeah. The Derby Day pie says it's inspired by traditional sweets from a day at the racetrack. I have been to the races a lot, and I don't know about traditional sweets, but okay. <laughs> Uh, features a pie shell with chocolate nut filling topped with buttercream and a horseshoe decor. So, yeah. But the buttercream is green. Like turf. Right. And then the horseshoe on top of it. You know, the horseshoe looks like a cookie. Yeah, I know. It is a cookie. Ah, uh, okay. That makes sense. So, it looks like it's a pie crust just stuffed with buttercream and a cookie on top. <laughs> Holy cow. I would actually be okay with that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think it's shareable. It seems pretty heavy otherwise. Yeah. 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 So. That's it for all the news. Yes, it is. I yeah. think it was interesting news. It was. Not a lot, mm-hmm. but cool stuff going on. Yeah. So, yeah, Friday we went over to Disney Springs. We met up with, as we said, Jen and John and Jason and, well, all the J's. And uh, so we did a couple of things that we hadn't done before. We went to the Paddlefish. Yes. Um, just to the bar upstairs, but it was cool. Um, so did you take weird. the elevator up? Or did you walk? Uh, no, I walked up the stairs because I okay. didn't really know where I was going at first. Like, I, Yeah, I didn't either. She, like, well, she had said she left it downstairs, and then she sent me a text after we got inside that she was on the third floor. Oh, okay. So just went upstairs. Didn't know where it was anyway. Right. It was a little weird. Like, there's a bar and mm-hmm. the outside patio, and then there were like, people eating dinner in there too. So I don't know. It was a little bit of a weird room. Yeah, it was for that, but um, it was fun. Bartenders was- were good. They made good. They, well, it was beers that we had, right? Um, but they had a good variety of like kind of craft beers, smaller breweries yeah. anyway. Yeah. But they didn't taste quite so crafty. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes craft beers have a flavor to them. These were very smooth. I yeah, like them. Well, they, I mean, had, they weren't. Yeah. They weren't microbreweries. They were. You yeah, know, maybe that's why. Yeah, just a little different. 
Mm-hmm. But it was good. It was it was fun. We were there for I mm-hmm. don't know an hour or so, and yeah, Jen got like a caprese salad, and it was really good. It, it was something really good. in the olive. There's something in that olive oil. It was a very special olive, certain type of olive oil that had something in it. It was just brought out the flavor. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah I had some of it with her. It was very so. good. Now the unusual thing up there though was was the way the bar was. It was falling what, apart. Well, yeah, but um, <laughs> that was, we have to explain that. So, you know, where your feet go, the underneath of the bar, if you kept it, like Jen hit it with her foot and then a whole bunch of the pieces of it just fell on the ground. <laughs> yeah. It had like this applique kind of front on it and they were very loose. And yeah. they yeah. And they were like overlapping like a roof, right? So if right. one, if you hit one, it knocked off three or four, like. So I just kept picking them up from the ground and handing me the bartender. <laughs> and, and you can see the glue on the back. It was like they barely put anything on it. There was no way they were ever going to stay. It was weird. Yeah. And then they had what? It was four chairs on one side. And then there was the lower bar. And then it was like a step down as far as the bar yeah. height. And then like three or four on the other side. Of chairs. It was just a little... Instead yeah, of one, I guess it was four. It was yeah, it was kind of weird setup. Yeah, but it worked out. It, it it was fine. I just it was unusual, is what it yeah. was. Yeah, so, so I enjoyed it. Yeah, and then we're up there, and it just started pouring out of nowhere. I mean, mm. it was sunny, and then it was pouring. <laughs> and there's and poor was, people outside. It was still sunny, and it was raining hard. Yeah, I mean, you know, fairly hard, but that's Florida. Yeah. Yeah. So. But um I on the way back there I stopped at Stargazers at Planet Hollywood. Right. It's not a new place. Um it's a cool it, place to go it's because like under it's, Planet Hollywood though, right? Outside and like underneath the right thing. So, biggest problem with it is that you have to go inside to go to the bathroom. Oh. Okay. Um which is just poor planning. That's terrible. Or you, planning. Or you can go over by Coca Cola. Like it's weird. Yeah, that's um, terrible planning. But they had five dollar drafts. I don't know oh, how wow. long. Yeah. But they had five dollar drafts, and it was Bud Light, Stella. Don't remember, and I know Blue Moon, and I don't know, maybe Florida Cracker. Yeah. Well, that's still a good deal, though. But yeah, five dollar pints. So yeah. Yeah. That was cool. It was nice. as busy as I'd ever seen it, and it still only had like six, seven tables with people at them. Place is never busy, apparently. Mm, I don't understand why, but it never yeah. is. It's a great place to go sit down and yeah. have a drink. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and underneath with all the fans going and in the shade, it really wasn't that hot. Yeah. Like it was comfortable well, well, in there. Yeah, because I know we've been in there even on a on a cool night. It's even cooler down there because it doesn't get any direct sun. Right. Yeah, so, like all day long, it's in the shade. So, and they right. had uh, they had live music um, later that night. There. Oh, cool! One yeah. night a week they do karaoke, or a couple wow. nights. I can't remember. It was on the sign. Wow! And then on weekends they have like a little you know live music thing going. So that's pretty cool. Very cool. Selfishly, yeah. I hope that doesn't make them busier, but <laughs> it's a neat little place. They need, you know, they, need, yeah. they should be busier than they are. Yes. Anyway, um, we stopped by Homecoming. Mm-hmm. I wanted to go, of course, to House of Blues. Yes. So we left Paddlefish. We uh, stopped into Homecoming. Homecoming. Mm-hmm. Um, I got one of their water bottles. You did. So it was not too bad. It was like $21, but it's like basically half price refills from now on. Oh, is that what that is? I didn't know yeah. how it worked. So and it was, yeah. it was a, um, it's, basically a John Daly, but with moonshine. Yeah. Sweet tea lemonade and moonshine. Right. And the koozie on the, I guess you got to choose the koozie on the outside of it. Is that what it was? 
No, you got a homecoming. No, it doesn't actually say homecoming on it. Oh, I don't know. She just gave it to me. Oh, because it's like just got the like the Florida flag on it. Oh, cool. Maybe that means I can use it at Yeah. Splitsville then too. Yeah. Well that'd be nice. You're, you're supposed to be able to, but yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um Jen just wanted a biscuit. <laughs> So we we all got, you know, something to drink and a biscuit. Jason got something to eat. I can't remember what. Like chicken sliders. Oh, really? Yeah. And they were there was a lot of chicken on them, so it looked pretty good. Oh. That's good. Yeah. Then we went to House of Blues and closed down Disney Springs at House of Blues, listening to uh, yet another really good band. Mm-hmm. So, all in all, a very fun night. Um, it was. Homecoming, yeah. we walked five, of, well, four of us right up to the outside bar and sat at the bar. Oh. And that was, you know, whatever time that was at that point. Let's track of time. So, it was after dark, so. Right. At one of the busier times for Disney Springs, and we were able to walk right up, so that's good to know. That is good to know, yeah. Then, like I said, um, House of Blues, we walked in, got a table. And... Yeah, and we got, uh, we wanted to get some food. Yeah. But the out, but the outside kitchen was closed. <laughs> right. Which is funny. So we actually had to go in. Technically, we had to go in and get it to go. So we went into the bar all the way in the back and ordered, um, Jen and I ordered like two appetizers. We got like fries, yep. cheese fries, and nachos. Nachos of some sort. Yeah. They were both awesome. Yes, they were. So House of Blues is just it, it's a pretty it's, good just, it's our favorite spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Favorite Disney yep. Spring spot. So mm -hmm. just for all around. I mean, good drinks, right. good food, good music, music. inside and outside. Mm -hmm. And you can go and just relax, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just chill out and have yeah. some drinks and mm -hmm. have a little food and listen to music. Exactly. Super cool place. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. That's all I got. All right. Well, um, it's going to be a short episode this week. We've been busy, and honestly, Disney hasn't with the news anyway. I mean, I guess the biggest news was they still say that Hatbox Ghost will be in by the end of the year. Yeah. But not tomorrow. <laughs> No. Maybe they're going to surprise us, but they had Maybe, specifically but... said that this two-day closure was not doing it. Right. We'll find out. Pretty sure it's just prepping for the Halloween party. Yeah, I think, is, you know. I, is what I think it is, because they add a few little things for the Halloween party. Redusting. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, yeah. Um, thanks again, everyone, for listening to the show this week. Um, check us out on Instagram at Mickey file underscore podcast on Facebook. Um, the Facebook group is the Mickey file improvement district and uh, got another couple new members this week. So thank you guys. Thank you. Um, podcast is available anywhere. You can find podcast on Stitcher for like maybe another few weeks. <laughs> What is Stitcher going away? away? Yeah, it's part of Sirius XM, and I think they're coming out with some new deal for podcasts. I don't know. I don't know. That's what I heard. Um, as always, the best way to support the show is just subscribe, like, follow, whatever it is on your podcatcher of choice. Um, tell somebody you know about us, and uh, if you're inclined, um, Go to Apple or Spotify and uh, drop a review for us. We would really appreciate that. Yes. If uh, you want to reach in, reach us, get in contact with us for any reason about, you know, show ideas, or if you want to be on the show, we haven't had a guest on in a while. We haven't. Um, send us an email at Mickey file podcast, all one word at gmail.com. Thanks. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.